when I started covering hockey, I didn't know anything about hockey. I'd never watched a game in my entire life when they made me the Washington Post Capital Speed Reporter. Um, and what happened was I did not hide that fact. I told everyone in the Capitals locker room that I'd never watched hockey before. Um, because they were much more willing to explain certain things to me. And actually my reporting was better that first year probably than any other year because I actually worked harder to kind of explain to a lot of people who read hockey stories, um, some of the things even they didn't know. Um, and I remember the coach like had me in his you know room and broke down game film for me, and like no other reporter would get that opportunity. That was because I was very much like, teach me. Um, so with Moscow, I, eventually I did convince them of this because I became like one of the best hockey reporters in the US. <laughs> so I said, I could do this with foreign correspondents. Um, and <laughs> I don't think I even believed myself at that point, um, but I did convince them after four years of begging. And um, yeah, I, those first months in Moscow were incredibly hard, um, especially since I got there December 2019. Um, I think we know what happens at the start of 2020, pandemic. Uh, I just got to a new country. I want to like meet people, meet sources, travel, get to know it. And I got stuck in a lockdown and then reporting from the inside of my apartment and writing um, just, you know, from home, which, what's the point of being in Moscow um, <laughs> at that stage? So, yeah, but I felt like second year I was really getting into a groove with it. There was obviously a lot of news that really um, captured US interests, the Navalny stuff specifically. The documentary just won an Oscar. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you just gain with confidence, you kind of understand that um, as a foreign reporter, you're not writing for the audience of the country you live in, you're writing for your audience in the United States, and um, it changes the way you think about stories and the framing and what kind of story it is you go after, because um, ultimately, like, something could be a really interesting story in Russia, but it's really not of note for American readers. Um, yeah, and then the Ukraine thing just kind of happened from that, uh, how I got used to conflict, I have no idea. Um, that was also just sort of a adaption under literal fire. Um, and I think what I've realized is this is my favorite. Um, war reporting is incredibly difficult, emotionally especially, uh, but uh, there's a realness to it, a rawness to it, that um, the kind of journalism you can do with it is really addicting. And um, a lot of like the, the war in Ukraine, obviously, and at some point I assume when this is over, I will go to a different conflict. <laughs>